1035, we're booking. September Inner Squad, we will have more information on this, but I did want to mention this really quick because I feel like in some ways this might be easier to explain than, than type out in an email. And, and we know we get enough emails. Two weeks from today at Hawks Landing, we're gonna do an Inner Squad. Um, it's gonna be a meet format like you've never seen before. It's gonna be one heat at the time, two kids racing, one in lane one, one in lane three. Or we might use lanes two and four, whatever. Yeah, we're going to have a lane in between them so the timers are more spread out. We're going to have coaches as the timers. You're going to get up. You're going to do one race. It's going to be several hours. I think it'll take four to five hours of just a continual stream of one two-person heat after the other. Um, there's not going to be scheduled warm-up times. There's not going to be anything like that. We're going to break you into – we're going to offer uh, eight different events. You can choose one. The times are going to be official, by the way. Um, we're going to offer eight events, each of the 50s, each of the 100s, 100 IM, the 200 IM. You can choose one. Um, basically, we're going to have one session that'll take about, you know, noon to 1.30, somewhere in that time frame. We'll have another session that'll be about 1.30 to 3. We'll have another session that'll be about 3 to 4.30. Um, you can sign up for either one of those. On uh, We'll have a sign-up genius link for that. Once we have the final timeline, you'll know when your event is. You know, if you're in the first event of the one o'clock or the noon session, you'll be pretty close, you know, noon, 12, 10, something like that. Um, other events, you know, you might be later. And the sessions might not take an hour and a half each. Kind of depends on where everybody's interested in. Some of them might be bigger. Some of them might be smaller. But either way, you'll get a timeline that says, hey, you race at 135. The expectation is you show up, just you, the kid, at 1.15, 20 minutes prior, we'll give you 10 minutes to warm up. You can relax for 10 minutes, then you race and you go home. So it's not, you know, this roster group or this age group or this, you know, it's every individual kid is going to show up at a time determined by when they race. We're going to get 10 minutes to do a quick warm up, 10 minutes to dry off and chug some Gatorade, and then they're going to get up on the blocks and go. Uh, we'll have coaches, service timers, parents. Uh, this is all at Hawks Landing. If you haven't been up there, there's ample room to watch from outside the fence, so it should be pretty good. Um, again, the question marks are there just as a reminder to me that there is gonna be a lot more information on that later. Looking ahead, well actually, you know what, let's see. Drew, did you wanna talk about some of the, I'm gonna stop the share for a second here. Drew, do you wanna give a one minute version or three minute version of what you kind of talked about to the high school parents, sort of the state of the sport where we're at right now? Uh, well, the state of the sport is it's in uh, a huge flux. Uh, one of the things that there's been some um, surveys and research going out that 25% um, of the LSCs, the LSCs is our political units, and our LSC is obviously Wisconsin, but there's others that are geographically different. Um, basically, 25% of the LSCs, when we last checked, have, were not in the water at all. 25% were just doing things as if nothing has changed, and then the rest of them have been kind of where we're at. So uh, basically, um, the, the, the thing I get from people real quick is, are our kids falling behind? And the answer is probably, uh, but it's all of our kids. It's maybe, what, 85% of USA Swimming is falling behind. I'm not sure what, who they're falling behind, though, of because there aren't any meets. And uh, you know, we'll talk about some stuff a little bit later, but uh, it's a different world. And when we talk about pool time here in a moment, uh, we'll talk about what that means. Great, yeah, and, and Wisconsin is, if you're not familiar, I mean, Dane County, we have some of the more restrictive, um, restrictive uh, guidelines that prevent swim practice. Um, but it's, it's hit or miss all over the state. There are clubs that are functioning somewhat normal. Um, there are clubs that are gone. You know, there are clubs that have not practiced once since March. There are clubs that have officially folded. There are clubs that have folded in everything but, but name. You know, they're, they're just basically dormant, and they may come back in a year, but they, are, they, they don't exist, and they haven't existed for six months. Um, so it, it's really hit or miss all over Wisconsin. Um, there were some meets in the Milwaukee area, but then I think those meets, the results are going to be invalidated because it's really hard to run a meet safely under COVID guidelines, even in the Milwaukee area where they're a little looser. 
So uh, going back to our slideshow, there we go. So with things being so in flux, obviously we have a lot of pool time right now. Um, a lot of it's outdoor, some of it is indoor. We're lucky that we were one of the only people in the area that has access to an indoor pool currently. Um, so what does it look like in October? We have time secured at Edgewood. Um, right now it's, it's four to you know, nine or we might even go later. Four till four till whenever a couple days a week, and uh, there's a group in there till six a couple days a week. We haven't really been utilizing it uh, in, in the mornings as much as we could going forward um, because we've been taking advantage of the outdoor pools because that's been real nice in the 50 degree drizzle. Um, and we haven't been using it. We've been using it some on the weekends, but not as much as we're able to if we want to really max it out like we will be going forward. Uh, we've secured some time at Harbor Athletic Club. Um, we have a couple nights in their sport pool, if you're familiar. It's sort of a warm water pool. It's 23 yards, um, seven to nine, a couple nights a week. Um, so that'll be a good opportunity for some of our, our younger swimmers to get some practice in. Uh, we have time at Sauk Prairie, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings from seven to nine. So we'll be utilizing that um, for some of our, our older swimmers, especially. And then uh, we just... Uh, uh, Brenda was just telling us before we let all the parents in, um, we give us an update on Baraboo. Sounds like we have some time lined up on Baraboo to start in a couple weeks there. Um, we have the question marks here. We have some other places we are in talks with. Um, we're not the type of people or not the type of club to sell you a bill of goods and tell you we got all these magic beams that we don't have lined up yet. Um, so what I put up there is, is what we know we're going to have for sure. And then there are some other options that we're pursuing that, that might um, might work out for us. Yeah, Jacob, I just want to chime in yep. here real quick. Um, it, Drew, Jacob, the coaches, with the pool situation, uh, we have been working the phones, working the emails, talking to whether it be all the high schools in the area, the pool directors, we have talked to school board members. Um, we're working the phones in the emails here. And I, you might look at this list and go, eh, you know, look at it a little funny, but I will tell you, this is the only water in town and um, there's not much else that people can get. And I want to just kind of, again, what Drew, Jacob, the coaches have been doing here to get this much water is, is pretty amazing. We're feeling really good about this right now. As Jacob said, other teams are in worse shape. Um, and for a club our size and the stretch we have, um, we're pretty thankful for this. So we're going to keep pushing. We're going to see if the, again, things change, see if we can get more time. But again, um, you know, we're feeling, we're pretty happy. Uh, could we use more? Absolutely. Um, and, and hopefully that will change in the coming months. Yeah, there are some teams in, in Dane County of significant size that have essentially nothing once it gets too cold to be outside. Um, and they're efforting the same as we are, but there's essentially nothing. Um, one of the nice things is as places start to open, you know, we have that long-standing relationship with, with MSCR. Um, so if and when Madison schools open up for rental, uh, we're confident we'll be in there with our, you know, a version of our regular time at West and East. We have a very long-standing relationship with Middleton. Um, you know, we've talked to the athletic director or the pool director there. And so if and when they're able to open for rental, we should have a, a good semblance of our regular time. And I just had a great conversation with the uh, Monona Grove pool director the other day and was able to share some resources with her that she was looking for to kind of convince her bosses that we should be in there uh, sooner rather than later. Um, and then the, the new Verona pool, the way they have their um, uh, rental policy is that uh, they, don't, they didn't want to rent exclusively to one team or another. So if and when they start um, renting time there, we should be, we should be um, in line to get a good chunk of time there as well. Um, but like we said, no matter how much, you know, even if all those things fall into place, and it, as long as we're restricted to what we're essentially doing is two and sometimes two and a half per lane, that's a lot less kids than a normal practice. So even if we had every bit of pool time we had last year, it wouldn't be, you know, the same amount. But what are we doing? We're not, we're, um, we're thinking ahead. So we're going to be doing a lot of programming out of the water. Um, this this October and, and beyond for the foreseeable future. It's not as good as being in the water, but your kids, especially the ones that are um, virtual schooling right now, 
need this, right? They need some sort of athletic break. They need some sort of run around, get some exercise, um, work out the work out their extra energy. Um, so we're going to do a lot of focus on dry land or athleticism training. Um, we see this as having both a short and a long term benefit. Short term, obviously, um, there's never been a coach that's looked at a kid and gone, "Well, they're a pretty good swimmer, but they're just." No, they're just too athletic for swimming, right? So if we can get, if we can spend the next couple months focusing on getting your kids stronger, uh, more flexible, uh, just more athletic and more agile, that's going to help them in their swimming. It's going to help them in, frankly, any activity they do, but it's going to help in swimming specifically. Um, in addition to that, talking to college coaches, when we, when we talk to the high school kids about swimming in college, there's certainly never been a college coach that said, oh, I'd really like to recruit that kid, but they're just too darn athletic, right? Like if you're the kid that can, you know, do a 48 inch box jump, you know, with a weighted vest, you know, the coach is going to look at your time a little differently than just some schlub that can't get off the ground. Um, Long-term goals though, as well, we're going to spend this time sort of establishing some routines for, for dry land. Uh, we have a lot of coaches with a lot of great uh, dry land and, and exercise training backgrounds. And we've been talking a lot about what program is gonna look like. This is something we've been talking about and planning since June. Um, that's evidenced by this next part here. UW Swap, if you're not familiar, is where the UW sells all sorts of stuff that it doesn't need anymore. When they decommissioned the natatorium, not the pool, but the athletic building, you know, the entire building, they sold off everything inside of it. I have a garage right now full of stuff. I have the, oh, somebody muting me? Not anymore. All right, great. <laughs> did, you move, did you mute me by mistake, Drew? Did I talk too much? I was trying to slow you down a little bit, yes. Ah. Um, so we have, I have a garage full of stuff that we have purchased, stretch bands and agility ladders and BOSU balls and, and jump ropes and, uh, we have other coaches with all sorts of stuff and we have the stuff we have access to at some of the pools we use. Um, so we have, we've been stockpiling munitions, uh, saving up for exactly this sort of rainy day. On uh, the facilities, so a lot of this is still be, to be determined. There's dry land space that we traditionally use in Edgewood. And if you haven't been to Edgewood recently, parents, they redid the, um, they redid the weight room in there. That we redid the music rooms across the hall to like a first class weight room. And then that hallway that we often use for just kind of running and skipping dry land, they're in the process of putting a bunch of equipment like TRX in there. Um, we've reached out to a bunch of private schools and are in talks with them about their gym spaces. We we're in talks with some recreation centers. We've talked about bringing in some fitness trainers that, you know, some anytime fitness type places. And we also have a couple other ideas that we're thinking outside the box. The reason we wanted to promote this now is, is twofold. One, we wanted to get everybody on, on the same page so you know that not only do we have plans, but what our plans are. You know, we're not going to be caught off guard in two weeks when, when our pools start to close because it's getting too cold. We've been preparing for this for, for a month and a half. Um, but also, if there are, are parents out there that maybe have any ideas or any influence or access to any of these facilities, if you're on the board of your you know, private uh, elementary school and, and have the ear of the principal or whoever makes those decisions, if you're, you know, there, the church by my house has a basketball court, you know, there's somebody I'm going to be calling on Monday. I, I know there are other ones in the city, but I, I got to be honest, I don't know the basketball courts in every single church in Madison. So if you know of any outside the box solutions, um, feel free to give me an email. Looking even further ahead, Drew mentioned some of this from our, with our high school parents. We had a separate meeting for those people. Uh, if you're curious to read, hear more about this, um, it's posted on our YouTube video or our YouTube channel. Um, so you can see either there's two clips. One is huge sort of giving a 15 minute spiel on the state of the sport. And the other one is uh, a guy named Scott Kitzman from uh, an organization or a platform called Swim Cloud that's all about figuring out if you want to swim in college and where. He gave a really, really good 30 minute presentation. If you missed that high school swimmers or high school parents, if this is the first time you're hearing about that because you missed those emails, um, your kid should watch that. It's, it's a great platform if you're thinking about college swimming. Um, we talked a little bit about kind of what's happening with other area coaches that some of them are just done. You know, they have no idea. 
Lancer WIA, obviously there are a couple programs in the area that are um, having girls swim, but most are not. We have no idea what boys swim will look like. Uh, and there's a presumption that there might be um, a spring season for girls, but you know, at this point, that's certainly not a certainty. Plans with USA Swimming, like Drew said, there's not meets. You know, they're, they're big meets that they like to promote. They're nationals, they're junior nationals. They're doing it all remotely. You know, Caleb Dressel's going to get up on the blocks at his training facility in time of 50 free, and they're going to send the results to a server and compare it to what uh, Nathan Adrian does at his facility. They're not getting together and racing. Our national teamers, our junior national teamers, our everybody on down, there's, there's not these big meets that are happening. Um, hopefully it'll change by the summer so we can have something like the Olympic trial meets we've had in the past, but there are people within USA Swimming that are exceedingly worried that that will not happen. Plans within the LSC. Um, we don't really have them yet. Um, to be honest, I'm on all these committees and, and I was on the board until about a, a week ago and we don't have set plans for single age state for December. We have no idea what's happening. I think, you know, to think we're going to hold house meets like we've hosted in the past, I think is, is overly optimistic. 